So the graph of G has a maximum point at A. Find the coordinate of A. So what we need to find, first of all, is where there's critical points. Because if your tangent is horizontal, you're either going to have a maximum, a minimum, or one of those points of inflection. So we set our derivative equal to 0. And a fraction is only equal to 0 if the numerator is equal to 0. And solve for x. In this example, since there's only one critical point, and they say in the question it has a maximum at A, we're able to say for sure we know that this has to be the place where there's a maximum. But if they said at point A there's a maximum or minimum, find the x-coordinate of point A and tell us, is it a maximum or is it a minimum? Well, then we would go and say, well, I know the x-coordinate is e to the half. And now I'm going to do some test points into my derivative. What happens when I plug in something less than e to the half? Say plug in 1, OK? First of all, right? critical points also include things that are non-permissible. Can you see that if you plugged in anything less than 0, that you would be taking the natural log of a negative number? And we're not allowed to take the natural log of a negative number or the natural log of 0. So this graph only starts from 0 on. Plugging in something like 1, what is the natural log of 1? 0. And so what do we have here that this part is positive? meaning that it's increasing. If we plug in a number bigger than e to the half, OK? In this case, what would be a nice number to plug in bigger than e to the half? e. OK, normally you would not say, oh, I want to plug in a whole bunch of decimal places into an equation. But in this situation, plugging in e, the natural log of e is? 1, so you get 1 minus 2 times 1, which is negative. So this section would be going down. So we could show with the first derivative test that it has to be a maximum at e to the half. In this case, it's enough just to find the x-coordinate because there's only one. Okay, But looking at the sign diagram, again, the idea of the domain of the natural log comes into play. So on our sign diagram, we put critical points where it's equal to 0 and also all the non-permissible values. And so in this case, anything less than 0 is a non-permissible value. This graph has a maximum point between x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. Find the x-coordinate of this maximum point. So hopefully you can see that we're doing a lot of these questions, and they all start the same. You're going to need to find your derivative and find your critical point. So where, what is our derivative? In this case, it can be factored. And our critical points are at x equals 2 thirds and x equals 6. So we know that at 2 thirds, it's either a maximum or minimum. At 6, it's either a maximum or minimum. OK? What else do you know about this graph? It's a positive x cubed graph. So from last year, from grade 12, you already know the shape looks like this. And so we can tell from that shape that the 2 thirds has to be the maximum, the 6 has to be the minimum. Okay? The fact that 2 thirds is between negative 1 and 3 in the question tells us 
it's a maximum between those also tells us that two-thirds has to be the maximum. If you tested your points as well, and I'm just going to add six on there, before two-thirds, the derivative is positive. And again, for plugging that in, I would have probably checked with the factored part of my equation. So if I plug in something less than two-thirds, like zero, okay, this is going to be negative. Zero minus six, that's going to be negative. Again, I'm not really concerned about the exact value. I just want to know overall, is it positive or negative? And a negative times a negative is positive, so that tells me this entire section is increasing. And if I plugged in something between two-thirds and six, like three, nine minus seven, this one is going to be positive. Three minus six, that one stays negative, so this section is negative. And so we can find out where our function is increasing and decreasing, and we can say that at two-thirds, comma something, it's going to be a maximum. If you wanted to find that y-coordinate, you'd have to plug two-thirds back into your original equation. Anytime we're trying to find points on our graph, that goes into our original equation. Anytime we want to find out whether it's increasing or decreasing, that goes into our derivative. Okay? And later today, we're going to start learning about concavity, whether it's concave down like this section or concave up like this section, and finding out how our derivatives can tell us that as well. I don't know if you're getting used to these questions already, where it's a normal kind of question, but they just throw an, another variable into it. So their purpose for this is so that you can't solve it right away with a calculator. You've got to show your, your skills with the idea. Okay? We've got an equation. Find the derivative. Well, we'd find the derivative in terms of p. there's a minimum value when x is equal to negative 2. So what does that mean? That means when you plug in negative 2, the derivative is going to equal 0. Because wherever you have a maximum or a minimum, your tangent has to be 0. So we can set our derivative equal to 0 plug in negative 2 for x, and the only thing we'll have to solve for is p. Another way you can find max or mins is with your calculator, so we'll have some questions coming up where it's not going to be easy to find max or mins with your derivative, so then you'll go to your calculator, graph it over a window, and then use the built-in programs on your calculator to find the maxes and mins.